Hello, friends. This is Benjamin, and it's been quite a while since I've been here. A lot has gone on with me, and I hope it has with you too. It's been quite a year. But I've really missed sharing these stories, and so I'm back now, and I'm going to give you a mixture of stories. Some of them, because I feel you've grown and matured in the time I've been sharing this with you, they'll be a little bit more serious. And I know we don't like to be serious all the time, so some of them I'll be mixing them up with will be more fun. And that's what I'm going to start with today, because it's been so long. So the more serious ones I'll tell you about next time, but they're by one of this country's most celebrated writers called Oscar Wilde. Today, however, I'm going to be doing some stories from a writer from even longer ago, thousands of years ago. This is a book called Aesop's Fables for Little Children. And Aesop was a slave. We believe that he lived in ancient Greece a long, long time ago. Now, you may know that being a slave is not a very happy existence. So Aesop was very clever. He used to tell these stories that were fun, but whilst they were also fun, they had little messages in and little lessons. And he, it was very clever because the other slaves would be learning, but they'd be having fun at the same time. So these stories uh, were first told a long, long time ago. And each of them has a moral or lesson about life. So the ones I'm going to be doing today, there's going to be two. And the questions we're going to ask is, how can a little mouse help a lion? And who will win the race, tortoise or hare? So you'll find out in this delightful collection of six much-loved fables, each tale charmingly illustrated by John Lovin is full of warmth and wit, the perfect introduction to Aesop for little children. They're published by Usborne back in uh, 2020. So they're these versions, which have been uh, retold by Susanna Davidson, are relatively new. So let's begin with Aesop's fables for little children. We'll start with the hare and the tortoise. It was spring, beautiful spring, and hair was off. Run, run, running. She was fast as the wind and light as the breeze. I can run all day and into the night. I can even touch the moon, she laughed. Look at me. I'm faster than everyone, boasted hair. And as for you, old Mr. Tortoise, well, well, there's no contest, is there? You just plod, plod, plod. How rude, thought Tortoise. Hmm. Thought Tortoise in a grump, someone needs to teach that hare a lesson. Hare, I challenge you to a race. Tortoise, are you crazy? said Mole. Word got round very fast. On the day of the race, everyone flocked to watch. No one thought Tortoise stood a chance. Go, Hare, said Mole. Go, Tortoise, said Raccoon. We'll race. From here to the oak tree and back, said Hare excitedly. Are you ready? hooted Owl. Are you steady? On your marks, get set, go! And they were off. Hare dashed away in a blur of pale fur. Tortoise took one slow step. In a matter of minutes, Hare reached the oak tree. Well, she sighed, this is dull. Where, where's the competition? Oh, it's tough being so great. I think I'll take a little nap. And she lay down on the warm grass. <sighs> In no time at all, Hare was fast asleep. <sighs> She woke only as the sun began to set, and the birds were settling down to rest. The race! The race! she cried. Hare heard the animals at the finish line cheering for Tortoise. She leapt to her feet. 
She ran faster than the wind, faster than the river, up hill and down dale, but she was too late. There was Torches, inching towards the finish. No! The next moment it was all over. Tortoise was the winner. Well done, Tortoise, said Mole. Three cheers for Tortoise, said Raccoon. But I'm the fastest, panted Hare. Tortoise can't be the winner. This isn't fair. A better than luck next time, said Owl as she flew off. Tortoise grinned. You see, my friend, he said, slow and steady wins the race. So do you know what the moral for the hare and the tortoise is? Slow and steady wins the race. Remember that. Hello, we're back again. Are you ready for our next story? This one's called The Lion and the Mouse. The midday sun was high in the sky over the African grasslands. Chief Mouse mopped his brow. Time to go home, he declared. It's far too hot for me. Chief Mouse led everyone back to the burrow, but Little Mouse couldn't keep up. Oh dear, where is everyone gone? she said. Soon she was all alone in the grasslands and feeling rather afraid. Help! I'm lost, she called. Is there anybody there? But no one answered. Then in the distance she spied a hill. I know, thought Little Mouse. If I climb that hill, I'll be able to see where I am. Up I go. And so up she went higher and higher and higher. She couldn't help thinking that it was a very strange hill. It was soft and fluffy, and it seemed to be moving. But maybe it's, it's not a hill at all, thought Little Mouse. But if it's not a hill, what is it? It's a lion! The lion was fast asleep. Unfortunately, Little Mouse squeaked so loudly that the lion woke up! How oh, dare you wake me, the lion snarled. I, I'm very sorry, it, it was an accident, quivered Little Mouse. Little Mouse tried to run away, but Lion caught her by the tail. Do you know what I do to those who wake me, said the lion. I eat them, Little Mouse gulped. I'm, I'm, I'm much too small to eat, said Little Mouse, and, and, and I, I don't think I, I taste very nice. Oh, oh, wait, 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 I, I have an idea, and, and it's a good one. The lion waited, Little Mouse dangling from his jaws. If, if you spare my life today, said Little Mouse, then one day I'll save yours. How Lion laughed. <laughs> you could never save me, <laughs> but because you made me a laugh, I'll well, let you go. Oh, you won't regret this decision, I promise, said Little Mouse. Back in her burrow, Little Mouse told the other mice her story. How could you ever save a lion? <laughs> they laughed. You're the smallest of us all. But Little Mouse ignored them. You'll see, she said. You'll see. That very night, the lion walked straight into a hunter's trap. He roared and he clawed, but there was no way out. The more he fought, the tighter the trap became. Deep in her burrow, Little Mouse heard Lion's roars. Rawr! I must go to him, she thought. Lion needs me. I promised I would help him, and mice keep their promises. Then Little Mouse ran, following the roars that echoed through the darkness. At last she found Lion, caught fast in a net. I'm here to save you, just as I promised, she said. There's nothing you can do, said Lion sadly. But Little Mouse began to gnaw at the ropes. 
she nibbled and gnawed all through the night. By dawn, the lion was free. Thank you, little mouse, he said. I can now see that little friends can be great friends after all. So, who knows the moral of the lion and the mouse? Little friends can be great friends. So, I hope you enjoyed them. I certainly did. I'm really pleased I got to come back and tell you this. And I'll be back very soon with some of the other stories I promised. So until then, you have a great day. Take care, friends.